Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And we are definitely into the peak of the growing season, planting season. So cartloads of tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and squash and cucumbers, all those summer plants, the summer vegetables can go in the ground. It looks like we've got a 10-day forecast that's just beautiful. So I think you can plant without risk of frost like we had that couple weeks ago uh, that killed a lot of things. It nipped my gardens. And so my uh, the, the indications, what I'm seeing, because I did a lot of gardening this week, uh, some of my, my maples, the tops of the leaves at the top of this tree are crispy. And so they just got frost nipped. The lower ones were fine. Uh, the, the top ones got burned. So I just I just rubbed those off or, or kind of scraped them off so that it exposes that branch. And so that branch is going to need to form new leaf buds. And if I, if I can open it up so that it sees the sunlight, it warms up faster, it will form leaf buds faster and it'll form new leaves. It's, that's what your sycamores, the sycamores, oh, poor sycamores. They really took it in the chin. So the, the leaves just vaporized they're going to have to form new buds. And so this can take two, three weeks before that happens. The great thing is it's warm out. The soil is warming up. And so that sap, the the root system is just pulsating nutrients and, and water up into the structure of this plant. So it will form new leaves pretty quick. Things that really got hurt were the, uh, the things that were in bloom. So the red buds, oh, they were looking so stunning. It, it took the flowers. And so unfortunately, those things that were blooming last spring or a couple weeks ago, then that frost came, it took the flowers. Now in that case, it will not form new leaf flowers this spring. It'll form them for next spring, but it will form new leaves. And so that's so that'll get kind of it's a little bit different things that happening. Your summer plants, all some things, they don't have any interest in anything to do with spring. They don't like that frost we had. They don't like cool nights. They don't like bright days. They just want it to be warm. These are things like desert willows. They've not even begun to leaf out yet. I mean, they're just starting to form some buds out. They're they're, they're waiting for it to be warm. And these these plants wait for the daylight, so the length of day and soil temperature play with these plants to go, okay, it feels like I can come out for summer. And so crepe myrtles, my crepe myrtle has no interest in spring whatsoever. Grapes, um, they're just barely starting to grow yet. They, you'd think they'd be full on growing, but they want it to be warm day and night all the time with long, bright days. So some of your plants have not leafed out yet it's okay. It might still be two, three weeks before they really take off. And these summer plants, so the summer plants, summer, the summer bloomers. So another one that really took it in the chin in my gardens, uh, this, the smoke tree or smoke bush, it's a typically purple uh, shrub, really, usually a real tall shrub, taller than you and I. Sometimes they're pruned down a little shorter, but boy, every single leaf, they were just starting to leaf out. It was looking so good. I'm going, oh, you're out early. That's surprising. Well, nope, it got burned back. It's not a leaf on it yet. So I, I, I pulled, went, took my gloves up and down the branches, pulled off all those crispy leaves, fertilized it. And within two, three, probably three weeks, It'll be reliefed. It'll look like a brand new plant, but it's kind of frustrating. It's part of gardening in the mountains of Arizona. Um, if you're planting your vegetable garden, even flower gardens, so geraniums, petunias, I planted some zinnias this week, uh, quite a few of them. Zinnias I love because the javelina don't eat them, deer don't bother them, they bloom nonstop, and they need to be deadheaded to really 
kind of force pulsate those flower after flower after flower. This is, zinnias stand up about just, just short of knee high, nice straight stalks with this great big flower that's much larger than a silver dollar. It's, it's probably four inches across and it just non stops. But the reason I like them, I love to go out in the morning with my cup of coffee and go talk to my plants and I'll go deadhead, take this spent flower off and and then it, I'll, I'll fertilize them a couple times a month with this flower power, this special water soluble food that, that I make here. And it, it just, it, the gardener within me feels better when I'm nurturing this plant, deadheading them and, and giving a, a few nutrients. But if you do that, it is nonstop flowers. I don't care how hot it gets non-stop flowers i don't care how many javelina come in non-stop flowers from now through oh probably halloween just amazing little flower it's just bright and perky they come in a lot of colors and so i have i have different colors scattered around that in my container gardens so i the, there are certain plants that self prune uh, that is when they get done flowering they automatically drop the flower themselves and put a new flower on themselves those are things like uh, there's a wave petunia series, Calipricoa. These are, uh, they look like petunias. They're smaller and they spread out. They kind of trail. So we put them at the front edge of containers, front edge of raised beds, by the walkway driveway. So they spill out kind of flow. So they get real short, maybe six inches. Then they, they spread out and will turn into this two, three foot round, beautiful plant. They don't require any help from you. Maybe some fertilizer because it takes a lot of energy to form all those flowers, but you don't have to deadhead them. You don't have to pinch off the spent flowers so that new flowers are come on. I don't have, I have a lot of those too, uh, where I have some low care, but some things I just like to, I want to go touch and talk to the flowers. It's a gardener within me. It's a freaky thing that gardeners do I mean you gardeners you you know what I'm talking about right you just feel better when you're when you just, when you have your hands in the dirt and you just start smelling the flowers uh, I can tell you right now the roses came in this week so we had a thousand roses kind of show up at the garden center they're all in bloom or virtually they're all in bud heavy bud or blooming uh, and so the the whole front of the gardens there's so many plants we don't have room for them so we just kind of spill out into the parking lot with roses. But the front of the garden center has this magical rose smell. There's something about it. So Amy, my buyer here at the garden center, Amy Langley, Amy, you're awesome. Um, she actually focuses on plants, roses that have more petal count. So a higher, some roses have a lot of petals. Some have very few. We focus on one that the ones that look more like a peony flower, these very thick, layered roses. And then they have to have a fragrance. They just have to smell good. So we really hone in on, uh, we don't care what fragrance. It could be spicy, could be sweet, could be citrusy, could be, there's a lot of smells or fragrances with roses, but they all have to have a smell. So, and they have to have, they have to, a rose should smell like a rose. So many of these roses, maybe I'll give a segment to that. Maybe at the bottom of the hour, I'll, I'll explain the different types of roses there are. Uh, so th this is awesome rose country up here in Northern Arizona. It likes this, the high altitude. They don't get the disease. They like the dry air. They like the brightness. So you get bigger, more flowers. You don't have to be that much of a gardener really to grow a rose here in Northern Arizona. And that's whether it's from, from Kingman, Williams, Prescott, Prescott, Sedona, Pine Top Lakes. Some of the higher ridge lines, maybe you need to protect them a little bit in the winter, but that's pretty easy to do. They just like growing and blooming in this higher elevation. And you don't have to care for them that much. You fertilize them a little bit and you, you treat them like, you're, like a tree. Put them on the same drip system as a tree. They're very deep rooted. If you ever tried to dig out a rose... Oh boy, you've got your work cut out for you. You just got a tap root that goes down to China. They're hard to get out of there. So anyway, a lot in store for you, but we've got Lisa Waters Lane coming in with the garden questions. It's what are your neighbors talking about right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. 
Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Columbine, Purple Plum, and our Prescott Poppies. These silk beauties look delicate, but really one of the toughest bloomers in the gardens. These wildflowers come in vivid colors of orange, red, pink, and white that are ideal for the hard-to-grow areas in your yard. You're going to love your backyard again. Prescott Poppies can only be found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. So it's Ken and Lisa Lane back here in the studio with your garden questions. What are your neighbors talking about? What are other gardeners seeing in their gardens? And there's some value in that. So when aphids hit uh, the gardens, they don't just hit your yard. They're over the entire net- Quad Cities network. There's hordes flying through looking to eat roses. Mm-hmm. So to hear what your neighbors are seeing, sometimes that, that's helpful too. Mm-hmm. Or when things are in bloom. So right now, everyone's got a phone. They're going, what's this? I want one. I'm going, well, that's a red bud. Let's show you where they're at. They're over here. I'd, so. tell you, I'd much rather have a picture. Somebody come in with a picture instead of it's green. And it's flowering. <laughs> okay. I had someone from Seligman. Love you folks in Seligman. Huge properties. Beautiful. They go, yeah, it's a tree that's growing up there. It's got a ball on the end. And then it like sprouts uh, twigs from there. I'm going, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. They have this new technology called a phone. <laughs> Take a picture. Bring it in a sample. Help. Helps a lot. I'll say that. You're right. So anyway. Uh, yes. Garden questions. Well, just by an aside, aphids are out. Oh, are they? We'll oh, just, we'll do a PSA announcement. <laughs> aphids are definitely showing up out there in the yeah. yard. So uh, watch your roses, um, some of those other things, those tender things that they really love to get on. Well, so this beware. weekend, it's the perfect time for aphids because it's warm and it'll be cool. It's warm and it's cool. That's when aphids, mm-hmm. re- that's their perfect temperature. They right. don't like summer. They don't like the heat. They love this kind of, mm-hmm. it's cold and then it's warm and it's cold. They they thrive on that. You're right. You know what else loves that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I will tell you. Okay. So Pam says she has powdery mildew on her roses. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she wants to know, because it is showing up, powdery mildew. I've had yeah. several cases in. So she wants to know what's the best way to treat them and take care of it. Pam, great, great eye. So powdery mildew for the rest of us just so they know what to look for. It's it's on the foliage. It'll look dusty. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of this white gray powder. It looks like powder. Look like yeah. you put talcum powder over the leaves, mm-hmm. only it's not talcum powder. It's bacteria eating your the life out of your plants. And if left unchecked, it can't actually kill plants or kill sections of plants. So it's early. So she's got a good eye. She's, she's mm-hmm. That's a gardener. You can tell just yeah. by that question, she's a hardcore gardener. <laughs> she knew what to look for. So what do you do if you see powdery mildew? It's so early that I would start with triple action. Mm -hmm. It's a neem oil. It it does aphids and it does powdery mildew, both. But if you catch it early, what it does, it coats that spore that's on top of that leaf eating that that plant, the sugars in the plant. It coats it so it keeps it from spreading. Mm -hmm. Now birds or or bugs or they can't light on, on... this particular leaf and then spread to your next roses and it gets spread that way. It locks it in. doesn't let it go anywhere. I would start with triple action. If it's a lighter color, uh, kind of seems like violet colors have more, they're more prone to powdery mildew, uh, light, light pinks, yellows can be more prone. Whites prone to powdery mildew. If you've got those, we've got a product in here. It's, it's organic. Uh, the, again, triple action is organic. And so is Revitalize. Revitalize is a new new technology of organics. But you spray the plant. The plant 
becomes so robust that it, it naturally fights off powdery mildew. It works on, on black spot, powdery mildew, leaf spot, shot, shot hole, mm -hmm. all these funky ones that are hard to control to catch it early really seems to lock it down and not let it spread throughout the gardens. Right. It's early yet to see powdery mildew. You, normally we don't see it this early. So I'm seeing it. Yeah. And the, and those are great products work really yeah. well, but you can also uh, make sure you're cleaning up any leaf matter yeah, that is idea. hanging around them because that's where the spores like to hang out. Yeah. Um, and then check to make sure you've pruned correctly that you have good air movement around yeah, them. That's good. So that that's one letting air, uh, and sunlight into the middle of that that bush, mm -hmm. it really really gets rid of a lot of these okay. spores. Doesn't let it spread. And it water likes, in the morning. Water in the morning. Don't let don't yeah. let plants get wet. Stay mm -hmm. wet in the evening. Yeah. Don't water at night. I would say suggest that hardcore for everyone that's tuned in. Phoenix waters at night, yeah. but it's 110 degrees <laughs> at midnight. I mean, who lives that close to the sun? You've got to be kidding me. Up here in God's country. We cool down at night, even mm -hmm. in the hottest of days. And so that plant will stay moist. And so then all of a sudden these, these problems, insects, everything starts to spread and, and multiply quickly. If you water in the morning, you want to water before the heat of the day. Right. So six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, water mm -hmm. then. So as we get hot, get warm, the plants are going, I'm okay. I hydrated. Right. Bring it on. <laughs> Good advice. All right. Our next question is from Chris in Prescott mm -hmm. Valley. She is doing her first garden first oh, ever garden yay, Chris. so she's been trying to decide what tomatoes what yeah. plants you put in so she wants your advice yeah. on what tomatoes you would recommend and then also she wants to know what's the difference between an indeterminate and a determinate oh, she's been doing her homework at darn google <laughs> so <laughs> it can get confusing mm -hmm. so now your grandparents they always grew out in the yard and they grew indeterminate tomatoes mm -hmm. these are tomatoes that or have no defined growth size. They'll take over entire garden sections. They are indetermined how big they will get. So indeterminate. That's, if you think of it that way, that, that's helpful. These are most of the tomatoes that you know. Early Girl, Celebrity, Champion, Brandywine, Beefsteak. These are all indeterminate mm -hmm. types. Cherry tomatoes, they can get taller than I am. And I'm not a small guy. <laughs> they can get just, you got to stake them, cage right. them, and then still stake them more. Mm -hmm. Determinant are your smaller uh, bushes. They're the ones that grow in containers. Uh, they're more defined. Bushy. Aromas, they're bushier. Aromas, San, San, Diego, San Diego's, uh, patio tomatoes. These are all determined. They grow to a determined size and they stay cute, yet they still put on a nice size mm -hmm. tomato. And that's really the difference. Chris, my name's Ken. <laughs> this is my wife, Lisa. We're just friends. We're neighbors talking off the back fence. The biggest mistake I find new gardeners make, they go for that really big, I want the biggest tomato. I want them to be the size of my head. Mm -hmm. uh, that's hard to grow those up here without a greenhouse. Go with cherries. New gardeners should put in cherry tomatoes or yellow pears, the smaller tomatoes, because you can't, they'll have hundreds of fruits and you'll feel like you're a garden rock star. I mean, you're just, they'll, they'll take a picture of you and put you on the front of garden magazines. They'll, the birds <laughs> will actually sing sweeter to you because you'll be harvesting so many tomatoes. Start with small ones. Don't go with the big ones. Okay, and then your, your medium size. If you want a bigger tomato to put on sandwiches and stuff, go with early girl and celebrity mm -hmm. champion, these medium sized fruits, because they're more prone to ripen before the end of the season. You'll right. get better harvest. Trust me, it'll it'll help your game as a new gardener. I agree. I agree. All right. I think we have time for one more. Uh, can't even read. I need my <laughs> reading glasses. You're, you're still 10, 15, 20 years out to cataract surgery. So, uh, <laughs> and you don't want to be on, we're, we're putting some of these on, uh, we're filming some of these so you can watch them. You don't want cheater glasses on a pretty no. gal. I just... So I just have to go like <laughs> So... John has a seven-year-old maple tree. This year, as it's leafing out, he's noticing it's pretty much just leafing on one side of the tree, oh, okay. not the whole tree. So he wants yeah. to know what happened. Is there anything you can do at this point to encourage more leaves? So that's drought damage or could be grub or, or gopher damage. So the, the roots have been damaged on that side of the plant. That's why you're seeing this stress. 
And so it could be drought, the, the, the roots literally dried up. Could be gophers, they ate the roots off. Could be grubs, they eat a bug that eats the roots off. So damage is there. Can you get, can you correct it? Absolutely, it's worth a try. So I would say fertilize first and foremost, get what's alive to fill out as nicely as you can. For you, because you've had this damaged tree, you need more roots. You're gonna have to regrow those roots. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a product here called Humic, H-U-M-I-C, Humic. Spread that on at the same time you fertilize. That, that feeds the soil so it stimulates where the roots want to grow out uh, into the surrounding soil. You're going to have to rebuild those roots. And it might take a season. might take two seasons. You'll know by uh, the end of June how bad it truly, yeah. whether you want to take a chainsaw to it. <laughs> You'll know by then because what's alive will have come out. Mm -hmm. or limbs will start breaking off. Right. And I want this thing to come back. The best chance is food and humic. And then take a sucrose, water, and hydrate that part of the garden to get rid of that, that drought uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd suggest. So, okay. wow, great questions out of time. Yeah. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. You can grow your own vitamins. We can show you how to grow your own vegetables and herbs for a healthier you. Waters plants are entirely organic with plant genetics never altered and non-GMO. Natural vitamins straight from the garden with naturally healthier herbs and vegetables. Healthier plants for a healthier you with plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Poppy, Columbine, and our Purple Twist Plum. This Arizona plum is the ideal purple tree between evergreens. Blooms in a profusion of pink flowers that precede the deep purple foliage. Large enough to use as a front yard tree and behaved enough to use as a street tree. Plant pears flanking gateways, driveways, or an orchard-like rose to screen neighbors. Purple Twist Plum can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So I had mentioned I would dedicate or talk about roses, the different types of roses. And, and if you're not a rosarian, this could be informative. If, if you know roses, you're going, to, eh, okay, that can It's just, I already know this stuff. Get on to something more important. But really, there's, there's several types of of roses and and you're going to plant them in your yard depending on what what type you want the most famous of all the roses the one that sets the standards are long stem roses these are called hybrid teas so you look at the tag of any rose no matter what color if it says hybrid tea rose this is going to be typically a four foot bush about hip high or so and then the flower that rose is going to extend out on a long branch cane and then, uh, then put on one single very large flower. Many of them have been so so hybridized that the color is very bright, but vibrant, but the fragrance can be bred out of them. So some of them have fragrance, some of them don't. This is where it pays to shop for a rose when it's in bloom. So you can put your nose in there and go, oh, I love that smell. That reminds me of grandma, or that's my house over there. It just brings back memories, that fragrance. And so there, that's a long stem. Hybrid teas are long stem roses. Florabunda roses, which is probably the second most popular variety. This is uh, the same thing, typically about oh, hip high or so. There's some bigger, some smaller, but typically a traditional rose bush size. And it will put on a long stem, but instead of one flower, it will have a cluster. It's almost like a starburst coming, coming out. Florabunda has many florets coming out on one long stem. So they're very showy. They're best looked at from a distance. So they, they're just covered with, with way more flowers. So they're great landscape 
shrubs. So from you know, right not right on the patio, but but out there in the gardens, Floribunda is a great way to go. Many of them have tremendous fragrance. So Floribunda is is really good. So hybrid tea, one rose, Floribunda, a cluster of roses. Then you get into Grandiflora's. Well, let me go down the list of, of most popular. So most popular hybrid tea than Floribunda. Then it would be probably shrub roses. So the the third most most bought here at the here at Waters Garden Center at least a rose would be a shrub rose. Now shrub roses these are landscape roses. You put them down the the property line and you want them to be just beautiful, no care. Many of them self prune. They put on a flower. When it's done, it drops off automatically. You never have to prune it. And then it'll set a new flower right after that. Typically, they're smaller flowers, but a lot more of them. And they look like a hedge, like a like a shrub. You don't have this long stem and then a rose on it. It's just flowers all over, all over the surface. It's just all over the place. Uh, typically, they don't have a fragrance. And you're limited on the colors. So you have reds, pinks, yellows, uh, white, and that's it. Whereas hybrid teas, they probably have 50 different colors right now as we speak. Hybrid tea roses, probably 40 different Floribunda colors. I might have 10 colors of, of shrub roses. But the reason you plant those, super easy care. Long a color. They're going to be in bloom from the end of April through November guaranteed they just go 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 without a lot of care whereas hybrid teas you need to count back three nodes when it's done blooming count back prune it before it will set another flower so it's more care more a little bit more difficult we can show you how to do that it's pretty easy but shrub roses the reason they're so popular lots of color super easy to, to care for the next one would be climbing roses Climbing roses did just get big. You want to go up an arbor, over a fence, over an arch, over a pergola. These are very long canes, kind of like a, a grape or something, or berries. Very long canes, very fast. Now, going down a, a barbed wire fence or any kind of fence line, uh, that's a great one to go with. Climbing roses. These boys get big. You're going to go 10, 12 feet tall, and they're going to be equally as large. And so, but, but, there's a place for them. They're too big for most areas, but up a wall, you want to soften it down a fence line? Tremendous. I use them as a property line screen. I don't even, I don't train them. I just let them go. And I've got a Cecil Bruner climbing rose that just, it's stunning. Blooms twice a year. It's thick. You can't see between the yards. It's really good climbing roses. Let's see, there's two others. Um, Grandiflora. Grandiflora roses are, I can't decide between a floribunda and a, and a hybrid tea. Remember that long stem rose or one that's long with a cluster? Well, grandifloras have both on the same bush. I can't decide. I'm going to go with a grandiflora. They typically are bigger. They're going to get about head high. You know, five, six feet tall. They're pretty substantial roses. So they're big. Give them some space, but there's a place for them. Typically has a lot of fragrance. Last one is going to be carpet roses. I don't know where they line up as far as unit, how many we sell of each, but the carpet roses, there's a the place for them. They're ground cover roses. So they you plant them, they stay below knee high. They're quite short, but they spread out. And very easy. Not a lot of fragrance. They're typically smaller flowers, but a lot of them. So they're kind of like a shrub rose. They're just without, they self-prune themselves when they're done blooming. They just drop their flower automatically, set a new one all by themselves. Super long bloom cycle from, from end of April through November again. And so they're just easy care, low growing ground cover roses. There you go. Hybrid tea, Floribunda, uh, what was it? Climb, uh, shrub roses, climbing roses, Grandiflora roses, and carpet roses. And they're all in stock now. All can be planted now and enjoy flowers for the rest of the season. Be right back after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. 
I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandma would be thrilled with the new Blue Meringue Pink Perfume Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. New pink blooms fill the landscape with fragrance of grandma over and over again in the garden. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, all for under $25. Lilacs like grandma used to grow, and better. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally, or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, it's Ken and Lisa Lane, The Mountain Gardeners. But this segment's not about Ken and Lisa. It's all about my favorite gal in all the world, Lisa Waters Lane. She grew up in the family garden center, playing on manure piles and, <laughs> and loading flowers into gals in the back of Cadillacs and trucks and, and just kind of grew up here in the family Ooh. business and then found a good looking guy. I did. Brought him but, into the business. Know, he moved away and then I found you. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you'd pick up that baton. Uh, touche. Yeah, too good. You're too, too, too quick with that. Anyway, um, Lisa comes and just shares her garden knowledge, garden, what she sees going on in her own gardens mm -hmm. or in, in talking with friends and their gardens. Just uh, it's all about you. Aww. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. You know what you should do? What should I do? People are confused about our kids <laughs> working in the business. Who's where? I What's confused. going on? What? How's this? Uh, you should just explain which kids are here, who's there, what they're going to. If you come in, you can talk to basically, you could shop for plants and only talk to family here. We got so many. Um, and, and I think folks are going to know, is that the oldest, the youngest? Who, which, which, right. is that the twin or which one? Did I just talk to you in the back? Why are you here? What's what's funny is people will hear us talking because it's four four of us girls yeah. essentially, and they'll hear the voices, but then they they think it's me or they think it's Megan <laughs> or Katie because we all sound so much yeah. alike. Well, so that's you grew up together. Funny, so right now we have our oldest daughter Caitlin uh, and her husband Jeremy moved back about a month ago yeah. now. Um, so they're here working in the garden center with us. Where did they move from? Moved from Austin. I uh, decided to get out of the rat race in Austin and move Love to it. Prescott, a little calmer. Uh, but we're thrilled to have them back and excited about them being here. And um, they're here a lot. I mean, Kate kind of looks, we all look the same <laughs> and sound Genetics, the same. So you can track us that far from the tree. Kate does a lot in the houseplant room. Uh, she really loves houseplants. So she's picking that up in the pottery and, and helping mm. us that way. Jeremy's everywhere. Uh, yep. Helps you a lot with social media, is out in the trees and the shrubs. And so he's everywhere as well. Um, Mackenzie is one of the twins, Megan and Mackenzie. So Mackenzie has uh, come into the business as well. She graduated, finished her master's finally, her master's degree in marriage and family therapy. But she's working with us now and we love to have her. And she's down by the cashier stand a lot. She keeps track of all our mulch and potting soil and, and all that. She's doing a terrific job. Love having her around. Agree. And Megan has been helping us out. Um, she doesn't want to stay. Her plan is to move in the fall, which is, is I will miss yeah. her, but we all have our own roads. Um, so she's here now helping us. She's everywhere too. She's up in the upper greenhouse a lot, helping with the annuals and veggies and perennials. And so it's lovely to have her. And then of course our son and our three grandchildren and our daughter-in-law, they're in El Paso for another two months. Yeah. And then they're off to Germany. And Chris, our <laughs> oldest grandson just had his 10th birthday. Yeah. So we're grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> By 10 years. What does that mean? For all. I got to tell you, honey, there's no way you could have a 10-year-old grandson. Oh, 
You just look too vibrant. Ah, thank you, dear. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Plus, when I compliment you, I compliment me because we got go. married. It's, you you know. <laughs> so that's the whole family. You, it doesn't mean you look vibrant. <laughs> 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 So, okay. yeah, that's pretty much the whole family. And, yeah, whenever you're here and you you want to meet someone in the family, let us know. We'll find them. We'll hunt them down. Like yeah. dogs you, just... You're probably going to run into them no matter what. <laughs> uh, so, they're, they're identical twins. So, if you see a gal in the back that looks very helpful, they grew up in the business. So, they know they know more than they most know gardeners know. know um, so, they, they just know all the, all the departments mm -hmm. and the different flowers. And it's on their radar all the time. Uh, and then you go down and, and someone is checking you out. It looks like the same exact person. Uh, it's That's their twin sister. They, they're spitting images of each yep, other. They are. It's fun. So, yeah, that's the crew. Well, the water lane, Waters Lane crew. There you go. Then we have our extended family, which is all the rest of our employees. Don't We're go there. Great. We need some. They don't, <laughs> listeners don't care that much. They want some garden tips. So let's oh, go okay. garden tips. We can do that. <laughs> so... Um, I wanted to talk about perennials that love the shade because I find that especially some of the more mature homes, older yeah. homes, because the trees are getting so mature and the landscapes maturing out, um, people have a lot of shade in their yard anymore. So they're having to adapt things that were taking full sun are now stretching and looking yeah. weird because they're just not getting enough sun. So they need to take those out and get some more of the shade loving perennials in. So, and we're getting a really nice selection. So I thought I would just talk about a few of those. It's, it's a lot of customers they help with older homes. They come in with their roses. So roses, they were planted back, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Right. Trees are small, but now those roses are stretching. They're getting really long and they aren't blooming like they should. And you're going, what's the problem? Going, they get, they need sun. They need more sun. They, mm -hmm. It's time to replace them and put, a shade lover, you know, right. rhododendrons, azalea, something mm -hmm. that's like a rose, only likes a shade that will thrive in that space. Because mm -hmm. those trees are probably not going to go anywhere. They're there I for <laughs> your life yeah, and their life. those trees there. Yeah. Definitely. So we have gotten some really pretty things in. We did get some bleeding heart in, which ah. I'm excited because I think this might be the first time this season we've had it. So bleeding heart has that real pretty kind of pink flower on it. Can... Gonna hold... Oh, there you go. Well, this is one where it pays me watching the vlog. So we're videotaping this and broadcasting through our social media uh, sites. And then also it airwaves mm -hmm. over terrestrial radio stations. You all don't get to see this, but for you folks tuned in, you can see the actual picture of a bleeding heart. Yeah, very nice. so it has a very delicate shaped flower that looks like a heart. Yeah. Hence the term bleeding heart. Loves the shade. A nice perennial just comes back year after year after year. Um, just really delicate, pretty, blossoming, attractive out in the yard. Yeah, and I find uh, animals seem to leave this one alone. They do, which Havelina, is weird. Deer, yeah, it looks delicious. I want to add right. some ranch dressing, take a bite <laughs> myself, but they it must be a sap or something they don't it care must for. Must be something in there they don't like. So yeah. it's a great one. We also got some beautiful foxglove in. So foxglove have that big, thick, kind of rough leaf, but the flower is a real tall, spiked flower um, that makes a not a cup. What's the flower shape? Like bell shape. Bell shape. Yeah. Thank you. Hummingbirds love them. Yeah. <laughs> Hummingbirds love them. We got the Dalmatian mix in. So you're, um, yeah. Yes. Dalmatian mix in. <clears throat> uh, so you're getting a, a variety of colors. So it's not just one color. Yeah. It could be lavender. It could be white. Could be All blue. the same plants. Right. Just right there in the same. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Very, very so. pretty. Animal resistant. Yep. There again. Um, I think that's the one they make. Is that the one they make digitalis from? I believe that is Digitalis. Yes, yeah. that is the Latin name for that. Right. You should show off that grass because it keeps bothering you. It keeps <laughs> poking the eyeball or something. So Okay. So yeah, it does keep poking me in the eyeball. So a lot of people are looking for nice grasses that you can put in shady areas. This one is striking because of that light yellow chartreuse yeah. green in there. It is going to really show up nicely in shaded areas and this grass likes the shade. So it's perfect for those perennial beds or under trees. Um, just a really pretty yellow grass. Acarus at Terminius. What's a, what's a, what's a common name to this thing? Japanese something. Japanese. Golden Japanese. Golden Japanese sedge. No, it's not a sedge. It's a grass. Oh, it's a Japanese forest grass. Ah, very good. So the reason it's so I bright, brought, look how it's so, it's almost it's glows. Bright. 
but look how it looks with the hookah. Oh. So this is a hookah. This one is a berry smoothie. So it's kind of a kind of a raspberry colored, you know, pretty leaves. So, so these two aren't necessary. You're not buying them for the blossom, but gorgeous leaf structure, texture, and those two colors together with that light yellowy green and then the really bright berry colored leaf are stunning and would be beautiful out in the yard. I think we're just about out of time. Oh my but, God. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. The lots of shade <laughs> perennials are out selling annuals this year. Yeah. The, the, Plants that come back every year. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing in more. We're committed to more because they're just, they, you plant some more once and they're done. Yes. Okay, the shade plants that can go into your backyard. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of the Month are Lilac, Poppy, Purple Plums, and our Songbird Columbine. This graceful beauty dances in the shade of the garden, holding its head high, smiling back at you. This bloomer comes back each spring with lacy green foliage, promptly followed by amazing two-tone flowers. An excellent cut flower that is both deer and rabbit resistant. So hardy, some varieties naturally call Arizona home. Songbird Columbine can only be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Spring is the best time to be outdoors, garden, and create a personal oasis in your yard. If you don't know where to start, Waters Personal Garden Service allows you to book an hour of one-on-one -on -one time with an expert without the crowds. It's easy by phone or through our website. No lines, no waiting. Purchase a $200 gift card and we'll line you up with one of Waters' private gardeners. You're going to love your yard again. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott or at watersgardencenter.com. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. As we approach the peak of the plantings, this is, this is the time. This is the window now through June, really. It's just like this mad rush of getting things into the gardens. And I've done a lot of gardening this week. All my containers are pretty well. I'm going to probably add a few new containers. There's some pretty pots that came in this week. You just go, oh, I haven't seen that color. That's neat. Uh, we'll probably add a couple more, but most of them have been planted out. I swapped out all the spring things. So the, the flowering kale or ornamental kale, it's, it's blew up this great big long fragrant flower. And I could cut it off and it would rebloom and regrow again. But I'm going, eh, tired of you. you. You've been blooming all winter. Pulled that out. Now I'm putting in geraniums and petunias and zinnias and all these other flowers that uh, that love the summer. They take the heat. They don't bloom out. They don't they don't force their blooms and kind of blow out. And then so pansies are they'll start fading. They actually look pretty amazing right now. Uh, they'll they'll look amazing through for about another month. Then they, when it's summer, when it's, it's 90 degrees, you can't keep them alive. You can't water them enough. And so I went, okay, well, that's enough. Petunia, you just swap it out with a petunia and keep on going. And petunias love the heat. More sun equals more flowers. A little secret, too, for you Midwest folks. You're, you all love your geraniums, and I do, too. There's some, a beautiful new orange that came in, and a real deep, deep, like, like Cabernet red that came in, geraniums. They're amazing. Got a new variety that's got um, a, a two a variegated leaf to it. So it's got purple in the middle, green on the outside, blooms orange. It's amazing. So geraniums do really, really well up here. Here's the secret I find. It's just my name's Ken. We're just friends. We're neighbors talking over the fence, that ba backyard. And my geraniums, I find the tag says will bloom in full sun, and they do. But when I give it a little protection from that midday heat, I find they bloom longer. They'll hold that flower longer if I give them some that, that midday. So they do amazing at, on the, my east side of my gardens. Um, 
actually under the over the overhang of let's say a, a south facing front door you've got a container of geraniums there very bright light is shining in there uh, but it's kind of shaded they will bloom amazingly long that flower never fades it's amazing so little kind of insider tips so out you know in ohio uh, michigan in that midwest areas you all grow them right out there in full sun and and they'll grow there but they just within a week they faded and they're done and they should bloom longer and so it's kind of something just my personal experience you might have a different experience and that's the beauty of gardening is we can share amongst ourselves but now is the time for flowers um mothers mother's day is coming up next week it is the time of of moms and so we have this flood of it's kind of fun to watch actually uh, guys dads coming in with their kids in tow and they're all looking for different kinds of flowers and so we open we just bring in lots of baskets containers bowls just pretty things that any mother would love uh, we have that all of a sudden gift card sales online and off and in store they just go off the charts we go from i don't know the, the amount but it's like quadruples the the volume of gift cards quadruples it, now through through mother's day it's a it's a phenomena and they call in from all over the globe it's amazing just kind of fun to hear you talking to old friends going yep my mom still lives there could you get her a gift card yeah of course we can and so they're calling in from taiwan or someplace some some way out there there's prescottonians every all over the globe i bet i could go up to Mount Everest and find a Prescottonian that I went to school with and I could be in a submarine a mile underneath the ocean's surface and I could probably still find a Prescott grad that we went to high school with. It's kind of fun to see that, but we, we spread out all over the place. But Mother's Day, it is the time. I think you can put in your summer plants. Uh, now, summer plants would be uh, any, any kind of vegetable that forms a fruit. And so tomatoes to pumpkins, from cucumbers to eggplants. These are things that like the summer. They don't like spring. So as your spring things bolt and they start to flame out, these are things like broccoli. You've cut the heads off and you've had this uh, cauliflower. You've got that nice big uh, flower that you've cultivated and you harvested. Don't keep it in the garden. It's taking up space. Pull it out. Put in a summer plant. So when your peas are done blooming, peas love the spring. They don't like summer. Well, when they get done, you've harvested your peas. We'll pull them out and put your beans in. Beans love the heat. Same with your flowers. As your Dusty Miller starts to, it's just beautiful gray foliage. These are yellow flowers. It starts to get kind of overgrown and kind of mangy looking. Pull it out. Put in your zinnias or your uh, uh, firecracker begonias, impatience. Uh, there's all kinds of flowers that love the summer. They don't like the spring. They don't like the cold. They don't like, they like the, the spring season. Some like the summer season. And so you need to put those summer plants in. I think it's safe to do that now and watch them thrive. They will just take off. Another insider tip too, if you're getting a, a hanging basket, let's say for mom, um, beautiful hanging basket, uh, it's, it's full of color, just flowers all over the thing. You can hardly see the foliage. To keep that thing blooming nonstop, it's going to take a lot of food to pull that off. And so if you're buying a basket for your, for your wife or mother or whatever, uh, get, her, get her also a, a bottle of flower power. It's this water-soluble. It's got a scoop in it, one scoop per gallon of water. I use it in my watering cans. Get, them, get her both. If you're using that flower power every couple of weeks, couple times a month, and you're watering that hanging basket or that container or that bowl or anything that blooms or fruits, this stuff is really good. It's got 48% phosphorus in it. Phosphorus, remember, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. That middle number in your fertilizer, that's what forms roots and blooms. If you want more, more fruit, you want bigger flowers, you give it phosphorus. It has 48% phosphorus. It's as high as I can make it in a fertilizer without it, without it coagulating, kind of settling to the bottom. It, it keeps in liquid form, basically. But you give some of that to your flowers every couple of weeks, 
you will be stunned at how many flowers. Put it. I put it on my uh, my barrel cactus, and uh, I've got a Mediterranean ground. Some of my cacti. You give it some flower power, just every once in a while. They are starting to bloom on me. They're amazing. Without it, cacti just, they don't seem to perform that well. They need a little bit of care and they go nuts. Uh, flowers and vegetables, these are fast growing, fast blooming. They put a lot of energy into that flower and their fruits. These things, that requires a lot of energy from that plant. It needs a lot of nutrients. So if you put some flower power on it to, a couple times a month, they just take, it's a game changer. The one I would say stay away from, stay away for the love of gardening. Please stop putting miracle Grow on your gardens. In the mountains of Arizona with this alkaline water, you do more damage than good. You start to see yellow. They just, they don't, that's, that product does not grow tomatoes the size of your head. That's just all a marketing ploy. This stuff is terrible. I stopped selling that 10, 15 years ago. Because customers are doing damage to their hanging baskets, their container gardens. It's just not that good. So I created my own. If you stop selling miracle Grow, the number one, more, that's how garden centers make their money on miracle Grow. But if you're, if you're making a stand, you're going, we're not going to sell this garbage in a box. we got to have something to replace it. You need something better. That's why we created Flower Power uh, many, many years ago. Is because it it help it actually works with our water. It works with our plants, and it makes them grow and, and thrive and really perform better. It, it's a game changer, really. Flowers, flower power, they go together. Got more? Don't go anywhere. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up here in just a minute. After this, you're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. There's nothing like tomatoes picked fresh from your garden. Waters Mountain Tomato Collection are varieties proven to produce and thrive. Heirlooms, beefsteaks, cherries, naturally grown for local success. Completely organic, never genetically altered, and utterly delicious. They're ready for your garden now. You can grow your own this spring, and we can help. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Shop Waters in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I have a a lot of friends, probably most of my friends, a lot of business friends, actually true friends. We vacation together, our own garden centers around the country. We just like comparing notes. It helps us. I just took had a buddy fly in from Minnesota last week and I said, hey, while you're here, I'm taking you out in the back country and showing you the magic of, of Northern Arizona. Never been here before. So we go out of our way and we just like, we enjoy each other. We go out of our way to see each other and then we share a common interest, garden center. It's like a big old sorority or, or fraternity in college, only we own garden centers now. It's super fun. It's one thing I love about owning a small business is you can't do this on your own. It's too complicated. You, when you get an HR issue, you, you call friends and go, hey, what are you guys doing with this? Or I can send an email out and go, how are you marketing? What's what's a new Facebook algorithm? How did they? What did they just do to us? And we can all help each other. And so that's part of this, this sharing thing. And so that's part of the joy. So being really small, just a proprietor, that's just, that's basically, I want bigger. I like teams and, and, and having... I mean, our, our Waters employees, they're family, truly. We, feel, we think of them as family. We help each other, support each other. And so that's part of, that's one thing that I love about coming to work every day. Yes, I love plants. I'm passionate about it. You can sense that, I hope, over the airwaves. 
But really, I'm just as passionate about the accounting, the back office bookkeeping and, and the marketing and how to do radio or TV or, or, or paper, newspapers. Oh, by the way, take a look. Bree, so Prescott Woman Magazine, uh, the, the publisher is a friend. Uh, we, we were in her very first magazine oh, 10, 15 years ago. She did us a huge favor and she put the family on the very front cover of, of Prescott Woman Magazine. That's my wife, myself, my twin, identical twin girls were all there. And if you open it up, the entire crew, the actual, not just family, the crew is, is featured. You want to know all about Waters Gardens and we're on the front cover of Prescott Woman Magazine, their April, May issue, or is it May, June, whatever the latest issue is. So thank you, Bree, for, for doing that for us. Huge thank you. And I'm stunned at how many people have seen that. It's kind of scary, actually, how many, how small our town is and how many people go, oh, I think I know him. What? Oh, there we go. Look there. So they see us at the garden center and it's out of context. So you see him at church or at the grocery store. You go, oh, we're, oh, I think I know you. Where, where are you at? We're still a small, local, yokel, easygoing, northern Arizona. All the small towns up here are sort of that way. And so when you head to your local garden center, wherever you're, you've, Christopher's up at, in Pine Top Lakeside or, or wherever you're at, uh, Glenn at, uh, at Plant Fair, good friend uh, in Payson, uh, they go out of their way to help you, to make sure you plant it right and you, you plant it at the right time. So we just started to gear up with these summer flowers, summer vegetables. So they're going in this week. This is the time for them. And so we time those crops to come in at the right time. Whereas some of your box stores, I'm almost embarrassed. They bring them in in February. I'm going, there's not one of those tomatoes are going to be alive. By they're going to make it to Mother's Day. Why are you selling those? I mean, I just, I just scratch my head. They shouldn't be sold up here. Or they don't take our sun or they don't take our water. They just, they just bleed out. And they die out in the center and they turn yellow and they just, they aren't right for up here. Your local garden centers are trying to help you be better. And that's the thing of small. And so, so many folks coming in from other areas, they, all they know are the box stores, the big names you know. Well, it's probably with gardening, it's quite valuable to get to know your locals because they know the local gardens and what's really going to thrive in your backyard. And so just a plug to, to shop small, support those people are, are, they're funny. They meet me, my wife and my two kids. I had a customer come in and they go, I was talking to Megan and I thought it was McKenzie and I thought I was doing a double take. And she just totally dumbfounded that both daughters, my wife and I are all here at the garden center. That's small business. That's what it means to be neighborly and just making sure that you're successful. Anyway, that's it for this show. We love talking to fans throughout the week. Come say hi. 300,000? Imagine a landscape needing 300,000 trees. Wow. But that's exactly how many trees Frederick Olmsted planted in New York's Central Park. That guy liked trees. Me too. A 2014 study found the more trees in a neighborhood, the lower the incidence of heart disease. Darwin, Einstein, and Beethoven hung out with trees to help them think. Trees are part of nature that helps us relax, daydream, and feel happier. Plant your own Central Park from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.